G'day guys and welcome to Redriven. Now, the Toyota Yaris, the Shakira of the automotive world. Why Shakira? Well, because it's small, it's talented, and apparently these hips don't lie. But what if they do lie? Because, you know, being a Toyota, you'd expect this to be one of the most reliable and bulletproof cars on the planet. But these are getting a few years old, so what do they like to live with now? What goes wrong with them? Are they reliable? And most importantly, should you buy one? Let's find out. Now before we get deep into the Aris, can you please do us a favour and hit those like, subscribe and bell icon buttons. And hey, why not go and follow us on all the socials as well. Now in this video we will be focusing on the Australian variants of the second generation 2005 to 2010 Yaris. In other markets it's actually called a Vitz or a Belter, but if you are from another market don't stress because everything we're going to be going over will relate to Yaris's or Vitz's or Belters in your market. This generation Yaris received a mid-life update with some cosmetic changes, extra comfort and safety gear in 2009. And it was available in a variety of variants with either a 4-speed auto or a 5-speed manual transmission with either the Chris Hemsworth Spec 1.5 litre engine or the less powerful Liam Hemsworth Spec 1.3 litre engine. And it came in a 3 or 5 door hatch or the far less popular 4 door sedan version. Which I suppose would be the Luke Hemsworth spec. Anyway, look, while we can't go into every graphic detail of every variant in this video because it'll just take far too long, we have done that. We've put it in our handy redriven cheat sheets. Our cheat sheets are invaluable as they provide a full breakdown of the car's model range, its common problems, what you need to look out for before you hand over your hard earned cash, how much of that cash you should be handing over, and so much more. Check it out in the link below. So how does it look? Well, it's not the most masculine of cars, is it? It's a little bit cutesy. Some of these do come with a body kit and fitting some aftermarket wheels can toughen it up a little bit, but uh, if you need a car to compensate for a lack of masculine self-esteem, this might not be the one. As far as quality and what to watch out for, there are a few aesthetic concerns, like the paintwork. The Aussie Sun has not been kind to this paint. It's kind of got what I call car dandruff. It's not the end of the world, but repainting it or wrapping it's probably gonna cost more than what the entire car's worth. So yeah, just watch that. Then you have the black plastics, which are no longer really black. They're more of a light gray, almost a marble effect. So that can be fixed up with some quality car care products. The headlights have a habit of yellowing and like this can be repaired and brought back to life, but it looks a bit gross. These hubcaps have seen as much contact with gutters as these tires have with the road. Again, can be fixed and replaced, but some dodgy driving going on there. This one isn't a common Yaris problem and is quite specific to this car, but this rain gutter channel plastic here has come loose. Also, if you are in the market for Yaris, make sure you go over it and look for any scratches or dents or dings like this one, because that can be great bargaining power when you're buying one. So how's the interior? It is truly spectacular. It's something I'd say if we were reviewing any other car, but in this one, it's, um, yeah, it's just a bit uninspiring. Even when you this interior was not all that flash and now it's getting a few years old, yeah, it's yeah, it's starting to really feel its age. All the plastics are wearing pretty well because, well, they're solid and hard and honestly not that nice to touch, but hey, at least, at least it's wearing okay. One quirky thing about the interior is that the driver's instrument cluster is in the middle of the dashboard rather than in front of the driver. This makes it far more affordable to manufacture, but it is a bit hard to get used to. It doesn't take too long, but it's just quirky to constantly be looking to your left all the time for the speed and revs and all your data. All the switch gear feels typical Toyota tough, everything feels good. But one thing, because the climate control vents are vertical, if you've got the car in say first, third or fifth gear, to adjust the temperature, you have to kind of fold your hand back around the gear knob to adjust the temperature control, which kind of makes you change it in quite a sassy manner. Like, oh, gonna turn the temperature up. Ooh. Okay, the back seat. As far as actual space goes, look, this is in my driving position. I'm six foot two, and there is loads of space. I've got heaps of foot room, heaps of knee room, heaps of shoulder room, heaps of head room. It feels spacious because the glass house is quite large. Look, you know, three adults across here is going to get pretty overly cozy in no time, but this is really impressive for space in the back. And as far as wear and tear goes, look, this thing gets a hell of a workout with kids and pets and life, and it's wearing really well. The fabrics are great because the plastics are quite hard, like up the front, they're not scratching too easily. It's very impressive. How's the tech? It's pretty crap. 
This thing does have Bluetooth connectivity and a USB input and an auxiliary input and a CD player and AM and FM radio. But if you want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, yeah, you're going to have to bin that one and get an aftermarket unit. That's about it for tech. No cruise control, not a whole lot of driver aids. Not, not much. Tech is crap. As far as phone connectivity, well, look, it does have Bluetooth, but Apple CarPlay or Android Auto will require a flashy new aftermarket system. And you might want to replace the speakers at the same time because the stereo isn't at Shakira levels of performance. Okay, is it practical? Well, look, considering the size of the car, the boot isn't too bad. And as I'll show you in a sec, these seats, they do recline, fold flat, and slide back and forth, giving you even more space. It's just, it's not very comfy though. Hmm. As far as practicality in the back seat goes, there is a spot for a small water bottle in the doors. There's a little pocket here in the armrest, but there, there's no mat pockets or nets for your fish. There's no armrest with cup holders. But one cool thing, these seats slide back and forward. How cool is that? Bit more space in the boot. Bit less space in the boot. And up front, if you're a massive fan of losing stuff, you're going to love the Aris because there are storage cubby holes and spaces everywhere. You ready? Here we go. First up, door bins, and they're big enough to fit a bit of a water bottle. You've got storage up here, which is a cup holder. You've got storage down here for your wallet and small things. Storage here, there's storage under the, what is this thing called? This is a steering column. There's storage above the steering wheel. There's storage above the glove box. Then you have the glove box itself. You've got storage spots either side of the climate control. A cup holder here, another little storage spot here, a spot for your phone down the side, cup holder at the back. Even in the doors, there's storage above the storage in the doors. So much storage. So surely being a Toyota, these things are pretty much indestructible when it comes to the mechanicals, but are they? Well, I'm not a mechanic, but Jim is, so here's Jim. What can I say about the Toyota Yaris? I like them so much, I chose them for the courtesy cars for my work. I've got a whole bunch of them out all day, every day, being used and abused by everyone, and they never let us down. In the unlikely event that something should go wrong, the parts are incredibly cheap, the labour costs are low because they're really easy to work on, they're just a good all-round nugget of a car. Because they're usually in a cheaper price bracket, sometimes people forget about the servicing and sometimes it's overlooked. So is it safe? Well look, as long as you don't crash it and nobody crashes into you, yeah, it's super safe. But if you do crash it or if someone does crash into you, it's not that safe. The pre-update Yaris received a four-star ANCAP safety rating way back in the dark ages, which means these days it might get one star, but it does have front airbags, anti-lock brakes, electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, some doors, and a roof, so it's not all that bad. There was an option of an enhanced safety pack, which just came with more airbags, and the 1.5 litre Yaris received stability control and traction control as standard from 2009. So what's it like to drive? Well, after 150,000 Ks and many, many years, it feels a bit mushy to drive. Like it's kind of like driving a bit of a wet sponge. Like nothing feels direct or accurate or precise, just a bit uh, squishy. Ride quality and handling is actually pretty good. The ride is really compliant. It soaks up all the bumps really, really nicely. And as far as handling, like look, it sits flat through the corners and it's, it's like really fun. It's a really fun car to drive. I think there's something about driving a slow car fast that it's almost like driving a little go-kart it's cool that fun factor is there once you're up to speed the problem is with this 1.3 liter getting up to speed this is a pretty slow car the 1.5 is a barrel of laughs this one is just a bit tedious it takes a while to get up to any kind of laugh inducing fun once you're there it's great look it's not embarrassingly slow but overtaking does require a bit of courage. This car is the five-speed manual, and as far as enjoyment of use goes, it's not fantastic. The actual gear change is a bit sloppy, and you're not really sure what gear you're going into. And also, the clutch, the friction point, it feels like it changes all the time. Like, the friction point is enormous, so you're never really sure when the gear is going to engage. The auto is easier to live with, not quite as much fun, but yeah, not sold on the, on the manual. As far as noise goes, look, there is a bit of road noise, there's a bit of wind noise, and there's a few little squeaks and rattles, which are to be expected, but it's, nah, it's not too offensive. 
One negative when it comes to noise is the engine note. Because this is pretty underpowered, you generally have to rev it out to go anywhere, and it's a really uninspiring sounding engine. Yeah. The steering is light and accurate around town, but once you're up to these speeds on like you know country roads or on the freeway, it can get a little bit vague and a little dicey. The other benefit with the 1.5 litre is it's potentially actually more fuel efficient than 1.3. A lot of people will buy the 1.3 because they think, you know, smaller engine will use less fuel. But in reality, you actually have to drive it harder to get anywhere, which uses more fuel. So yeah, as I said, it's probably more fuel efficient to buy the 1.5. Look, chances are you're going to be buying one of these as a bit of a suburban runabout, and it's great at that. Like judging all the perimeters of the car is really easy. It doesn't have a reversing camera, but super easy to judge where the back of the car is. It is excellent around town. Just the 1.5 litre, it's more of a little go-kart. It's just more fun to drive. 1.3, it does the job, but God, I wish it was a 1.5. Pricing kicks off at as low as $2,000, but we'd recommend avoiding those Yaris's unless you're a mechanic or unless your grandmother is selling it to you on the cheap because you know, she stole it. At the other end of the spectrum, you're looking at around about $13,000 for a top spec YRX with low kilometers in pristine condition. And here's a fun fact, those YRX's when new were $21,990 and 11 years later, they've only lost $9,000 in value. So that equates to $2 a day in depreciation. That is brilliant. Compared to modern cars in this category, the Yaris isn't quite as fuel efficient. Toyota do claim a figure of 6 litres per 100 kilometres, but on this test, we're seeing more like 9.4. These things are well and truly out of warranty now, but as far as servicing goes, we recommend every 6 months or 10,000 Ks. Because these were so popular when new, parts and support should be easy to come by and shouldn't cost too much money. And also, because they're so small and light, the cost of consumables like tyres and brake pads shouldn't cost you too much either. But make sure the Yaris you're looking at or potentially buying has a full service history. Because these were cheap, sometimes they're bought by people that are on a tight budget and that might also mean that they might miss out on some service intervals and that can spell disaster. So should you buy one? Well look, if you can find one with a great service history that suits your needs and your budget, yes, yes you should get one. The one we'd recommend is the 1.5 litre YRX in a five door hatch, as these are pretty much the sweet spot of the range. And depending on where in the world you're watching this from, that might be called a Vitz RS or a Yaris TS. Like most Toyotas, when they're well maintained, they're probably going to outlast humanity. And if anything, this Yaris in good condition is probably our pick of cars in this category. So. No, those hips, they don't lie. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And what do you think of the Yaris? Let us know in the comments section below. And while you're at it, make sure you hit those like, subscribe, and bell icon buttons and go and follow us on all the socials. See you next one. The 2010 Yaris. If you're watching this from somewhere else, and oh, fucking shut up, you fucking bird. 2010 Yaris. Fuck me. Chill out, it's okay. Oh, no, 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 no. They don't, they don't speak English. They don't. Oi!